Really, I appreciate it. Okay, so it's exactly two o'clock, so um, we can get started. Thank you, Etienne. Um, okay, and I think you guys can also see my screen. Right, so um, welcome everyone to this afternoon's webinar. Um, it's that time of a Friday again, and luckily it was a short week, and I hope that you all have a little bit of focus left for today's session on Revit project setup and also managing of your coordinates. Okay. So for those of you who don't know me yet, just a quick introduction of myself. Um, I'm a Ninota and I'm a BIM specialist here at Baker Bones in the AEC Build Space. I'm also a qualified uh, professional architect and I worked in practice for seven years. Then just a fun fact about me, I'm also a personal stylist and clothes and plants are my absolute weakness. Now, some of you um, may have attended some of our recent webinars, uh, but we're currently running a webinar series uh, themed Level Up Your BIM Journey. And based on this, we've spoken about some important first steps and also considerations as part of your BIM journey. Now, uh, to kickstart your Revit journey, I've spoken about the importance of having a Revit template and how this can really make your life a lot more easier if you have some standards in place. And then my colleague Niran Law spoke about the value of enhancing your Revit model. And she also gave some good tips uh, like using intelligent details, etc. Now, if you've missed any of these, I would like, or and you would like to go and watch uh, some of the recordings, uh, you can just head over to our YouTube page and be sure to describe so that you can follow and keep track of our weekly uh, webinars. Then just looking at our agenda for today, we will kick off with some basics on project setups, the steps, and, and also the various data sources that you typically base a new project on. We will also uh, briefly discuss how you prepare your CAD files for bringing it into Revit. Then we will now dive into the notorious, or some, coordinate system of Revit, if I can describe it like that. Now, it's actually not that complicated once you understand um, how it works properly. Then I will briefly show you the difference between Project North and True North, as this is part of defining your project content, uh, context and orientation. We will then talk about setting up your site and coordinates and how the type of project that you're working on determines the method that you're using. And for our last section, we will dive a little bit deeper into shared coordinates and I'll end with a video demonstration of how you establish a shared coordinate system between a host site model and a linked uh, building model. I will end us off with some takeaways and also an opportunity to ask um, questions. Then just a quick overview of Baker Bains and our service offerings. We are a niche consulting com company and our four areas of play are business process improvement, survey and design hardware, design software consulting, and also providing, uh, providing training. Now, besides us being an Autodesk reseller and a training house, we also provide a scan to BIM services with Topcon and Leica hardware. And then we also do consulting on design software such as IDAS which is a full BIM application of Civil 3D and Clear H3D, which is the leader in automated feature extraction for the AEC. Now, getting back to our topic of today, which is Revit coordinates, uh, why is this topic crucial and sometimes scary to customers? It's because the position of our BIM model is very important. We all know that. And then also the functionalities to define it in Revit can become rather complex. Um, in other words, more flexibility you have, the more chance there are for confusions. And then also many users don't get to practice this feature very often. So I would just like to get some feedback from you guys and run a quick poll. Um, so if I launch it, I would just like to ask you to, to answer or to give the answer that's most relevant to you. And the question is, how familiar are you with shared coordinates in Revit? So let me quickly launch it. I hope you guys can see the poll. Maybe if someone can just confirm for me. Okay, yes, there I can see. First time I hear about it. Okay, some of you know about it, but you haven't used it yet. Okay. 
is actually a good mix, but it seems like the majority of you guys know about it, but you haven't used it yet, which is great news for me. It means that at least I'm going to teach you something today. Great. Then we're going to start with a project startup. Now, just looking at the basic steps of setting up a new Revit project. First of all, you create a new project. We know that, and you can base it on a, on a standard Revit template, or if you have a one in your office that was created by a CAD or a BIM manager, you can use that. Uh, then you will specify your project information. You can enter uh, details like your client name, your project name, your project number, and also uh, the project address. Uh, then uh, the topic that we are discussing today is defining your positioning. And this is to provide the context for your model. And you specify the geographic location. You def uh, define your true north, the survey point, and also the project base point. Also, as part of your setup is to create your construction phases. And by default, Revit defines an existing phase and a new phase. I think many of you might know that. And then it also indicates the demolition of existing construction. If you need any additional project phases, you can just go and create them. Just jumping back to where you specify your project specific information. In Revit's Manage tab, you can go to the project information panel. And if you scroll down in this dialog box, you will see a, set a section um, that says other, and this is where you can enter your details. If your title block has been set up correctly, this will also automatically pull into your um, or update in your title block as well. Then looking at the ways in which Revit um, provides us to define our context for our model. Uh, we've got our survey point, which is numbered as one on that image. It's a small triangle. Then you've got your project base point. You've got your geographic, geographic location. Uh, you've got your true north and also your project north. But we will be looking at each of these as we go through our slides. Okay, so there are many ways in which a new project may be initiated. Each has its own mix of existing data. Now, when you have limited, um, limited data or no electronic data, obviously your project will, start, um, will develop from a blank sheet. If you have um, existing designs that were created in CAD software, you can also import or link them into Revit and use them to start um, as, a, as your starting point for your design. In addition to using your import CAD and link tools, uh, you can also import your CAD files by just dragging and dropping them from your Windows Explorer um, into your model or onto a drafting or a sheet view. You can also import your uh, PDF files with multiple pages into a 2D view, which you can use to trace over or use to reference um, or use as a reference to, to create your model of. Um, the import and the managing of your PDFs in Revit is very similar to uh, importing and managing of raster images. Just note that you cannot import uh, password protected PDF files. So you need to remove the password from the, uh, from the PDF first before you can import it. And then lastly, um, you may have a site plan from a surveyor which you can link or import into your Revit project. And um, important is just to set your true north correctly in, in Revit so that it matches the true north of the survey drawing. Uh, but we will talk about true north and project north a bit later. Then very important is uh, to sanitize your CAD data. Now, the importance of opening and checking your CAD data in AutoCAD or whichever native software it was created in uh, cannot be stressed enough. And this you should do before it comes anywhere near Revit. Now, the problems that you inherit from imported data are serious, and um, they can cause a lot of um, project instability if there's errors in it. Um, no, and no matter, no matter what your intended purpose of the imported data is, a few rules should be applied. First of all, remove information which is irrelevant to the specific task at hand, especially with large number of uh, vectors. It can be things like trees, vehicles, hatch patterns, etc. Now, we all like to have our drawings look pretty, but you don't need those from CAD files. You can recreate them in your Revit file using your Revit families. Then uh, files should be purged and all uh, data on layers which are off or frozen should be deleted and 
those layers should be removed. Then um, often your CAD files are, are drawn with the plans, the elevations and the sections uh, contained in the same drawing or they are spread around the model space. Now it's better to extract each view into a separate file so that it's ready to be used um, in Revit. Right, so if we just quickly have an overview of Revit coordinates and some um, positioning principles. Uh, first of all, your internal origin or your internal um, coordinates. Now, each Revit project has an internal coordinate system and it's based on your um, Y, X and Z axis. Uh, there are also primary and sec secondary coordinate systems, which is specified by the project base point and the survey point. And by default, these two, when you create a new project, they are located at the same position with zero values. Uh, you can establish these coordinates by using the values uh, that's provided by a survey drawing. And um, these coordinates are known to the project that you are working in only. And as long as you are working with a standalone model, whose position is not relevant to other models or to a site. You don't have to specifically reference these coordinates. Um, also, if you want to see them, you can open your site plan view or you can make them visible in another view. Then looking at your project base point, and this point defines the origin of the project coordinate system. Now you can use this uh, project base point as a reference point for measuring um, across the site. Uh, it's represented by a blue circle with a cross in the middle. Um, it can also be set, uh, used to set your angle difference between your true north and your project north. Um, then you will also determine the best place for the project base point. It can either be on the intersection of, of building grid lines or you can position it on the corner of a building like we can see on the image um, on the screen. Then looking at your survey point, now this represents a real world context um, for the Revit model. Uh, it also it represents a known point in the physical world, such as a geodetic survey marker or perhaps the intersection of two property lines. Uh, now the survey point is used to correctly orientate your building a geometry in another coordinate system, such as a coordinate system uh, that is used in a civil engineering application, for instance. Uh, this, the survey point is also used to create a shared coordinate system, which we will uh, talk about a bit later. Um, and this is used among multiple uh, linked Revit or CAD files. And what this means is that lo the location is most useful when exporting and importing files, um, then you will use your shared coordinate system. Uh, you can also acquire the survey point coordinates from the civil engineer, the surveyor or other team members, or you can determine the coordinates of a known location. So that is something like a benchmark point, which you've got values for, and you can use it or pull it from there. Uh, just on a side note then, uh, the survey coordinate system is synonymous with the following terms that is typically used by other software applications um, or in other contexts. Things like your global coordinates, GRS coordinates, grid coordinates, uh, surveyor coordinates, project projection coordinates, and also state plan. If you hear about them, that's they typically refer to your survey point. Now, the best way I've, uh, I've found to explain the difference between the project base point and the survey point is that when you're editing the project base point location, you're actually moving the model around on the Earth. But when you're modifying the survey point, you are moving the Earth under the model. I hope it makes sense to you guys. Then looking at coordinate system when we work with link projects, uh, if you are linking projects together, you may need to have one coordinate system that is referenced throughout the connected projects. And this is when you need uh, shared coordinates. You will also find that projects that have a, a BIM execution plan in place will specify these shared coordinates within this BIM execution plan. Um, link models that share coordinates can either be created in Revit or you can use a, a combination of both. You can use a combination of a Revit and a CAD file or DWGs, DXFs, etc. Okay, so further on shared coordinates, um, it allows you to adjust your reference point from the project origin to a shared site point that will be referenced throughout connected uh, projects. It is also important to note that nothing in the Revit model actually moves when using this system, even though it may look like it. 
um, it is just applying an adjustment to the point of the origin. So in fact, all of your elements keep their relation to the internal base point when, you, when you're using this option. Now, just a tip, you should only derive your coordinates from one file, and that one file defines the coordinates for all the other files that compose the project. So if we look at this flow chart, you will see that the side model is typically the holder of your shared coordinate system, and the file coordinates are then derived from there. Okay, so why is setting up your shared coordinates worth it? It's to properly coordinate the project models to work across software platforms, um, and that includes Navitzworks as well. Also to display the project in its real world location, including BIM and, and GIS data overlay. Then also to link files together that have different base points. This is a must have for co coordination. Also to allow contractors to seamlessly integrate their design data to layout navigation equipment. And this is also a must have for digital layout and construction verification workflows. And then lastly, uh, to easily overlay a uh, point out. Then just quickly looking at Project North versus uh, True North. Now all models um, have two North orientations, it's your Project North and your True North. Now your Project North is typically based on the predominant axis of the building geometry. Uh, and this affects how your, how your sketch and views and also how your views are placed on your sheets. Now, just a tip is that when you're designing your model, align your project north with the top of the drawing um, area. It's just going to make your modeling so, um, much easier. Then looking at your true north, uh, this is the real world north uh, direction that is based on your site conditions. And also just a tip uh, in order to avoid confusion, um, maybe only define your true north after you began modeling with your project north aligned to the top of the drawing. Um, and also do this after you've received a reliable survey coordinates. Uh, it just helps, especially if you have an angle to true north, it's difficult to model your, your building um, at an angle. We can also see that in this side plan, the north uh, arrow annotation, it in indicates the direction of true north. So then in just in summary to the positioning in Revit and also the different concepts. Uh, first of all, uh, the, reference, the reference system for the virtual space in Revit, in other words, where you are in Revit, that is your internal base point, which is your X, Y, and Z axis. Then a reference space for designers is typically your, which I just spoke about, your project base point and your project north. The geographic uh, reference system for surveyors refers to your survey point and also your true north. And then lastly, the positioning of your project site on a map is your actual project location. And that you can set up in your manage tab. If you go to project location, uh, there's a tab that says location. Then um, going over to our site and coordinates setup, um, the type of project that you're setting up impacts the method that you will use to establish your coordinate system. Now we've got, typically we've got two types of projects. We've got a standalone project and then linked projects. Now if you're working in a standalone project, you will be working with Revit's internal coordinate system, as I mentioned earlier. Now you can manually enter your coordinates um, for both the project base point and also the survey point. Um, and that you pull from the data that was provided by the survey. Um, so you can do this either in your properties palette or by just clicking directly on the, the icons. You then, you then position your points at their appropriate positions on the drawing. And like I said earlier, your survey point, normally you will, you will position it on the intersection of um, your property lines or um, on a geodetic data or a benchmark point. Whereas your project base point, you can position on your building corner or at the intersection of grid lines. Now also just note that the server point has a clip tool. And if you want to enter deep, um, values to that, you need to unclip it first in order to enter the values. Then when you're done entering your coordinates and you've uh, positioned it in place, it's just important to clip it again so that it remains in place. Then for link projects, you know by now that uh, we've talked about a shared coordinate, shared coordinate system, and we will be looking at that. Okay, so 
Also, just uh, maybe some of you have heard about the concepts of acquiring and publishing shared coordinates. Now, in general, um, you want to acquire coordinates from a linked model, such as a site, um, if you are working in a building farm. If you are working in the site model, which is typically your main farm, you want to publish coordinates from your site model back to the linked models. In either case, you can acquire or you can publish your coordinates while you are in the host model. So if we look at this picture um, in the center, that's your, your host model. And to the left is um, acquiring coordinates. And then to the right, which is number two, is when you publish um, coordinates. OK, so when you publish a shared coordinates from a host model to a link model, the link model is then updated with the new coordinates. So to do, to do your whole publishing of coordinates, you will go to your Manage tab um, in Revit, and then you will go to Project Location, and in, your, in that dropdown, you will select your Publish Coordinates. You will then simply place your cursor on the link model, and you'll click it, and then you will, Revit will give you a, a location with an site dialog box in which you will need to select a name position from the linked model, and you will click OK. We will see this when I show you guys um, the video demonstration a bit later on. Also, just note that the process of publishing coordinates, uh, it, it, it does recognize the current position of the building um, on site, and it pushes the established coordinate system out to that building model. However, uh, that information is not actually sent to the architectural model until the position is saved, but it, it is cached in preparation. So when you acquire coordinates from a link model or file, uh, the coordinates of the link model um, is, is established in the shared coordinate system of the host model. So once again, to do this, it's very similar to the previous process. You will go to your Manage tab, and under um, your project location in the drop down, you will select your acquire coordinates tool. And then um, you will place your cursor on the link once again. So once you've done this, the host model now shares the coordinates with the link. So if, if other loaded link models um, share coordinates with the host model as well, they also acquire the new coordinates. Okay, so I've done a lot of talking now. And next I will be showing you some practical examples of how you do the whole site setup and also how you establish your coordinates. Um, so what I will be showing you is how to link two Revit files and also how to define a shared coordinate system between the two. And during the process, I will also demonstrate to you how you model topography and make use of your spot heights and annotations. So just going to go on back. So I'm going to start by creating the site model, which will be your host project, in which I'm going to establish the real world coordinates. Now, I've tested um, the acquire coordinates option before uh, when working of a survey drawing from a surveyor uh, or a civil engineer, but to do this, you must be sure that your coordinates have been set up correctly in the CAD drawing so that it picks up correctly. Uh, you can also uh, use the sport coordinates annotation tool to test different points on the drawing if, if you've used this option. In my example, however, I've used the manual option of just entering the values of the coordinates uh, that, was, that I got from the survey drawing, and that was just to make sure that I'm doing it accurately. Okay, so um, I started a new, so to create my site model, I started a new blank Revit project and I based it on a standard Revit template. If you've got a standard Revit template in your office, you can use that to base your new project um, on. Just want to make sure my video is playing. Okay, so then I, I went into my site plan and I made sure that the orientation is set to, to true north. And that is typically because you want your uh, side drawings to display the actual true north orientation. Okay, so in other views, like I said, like your floor plan views, you might want to set it to project north just to make your the modeling of your building a bit easier as it's orthogonal to your screen. Okay, so if I jump back to my side plan, here we can see at the, um, the default position of my internal origin of Revit. Uh, the round circle is your project base point. Uh, and also the triangle is your survey point, and they sit on top of each other. Also, if you click on them, you will see that their values are still at zero. 
Now, the next step will then be to bring in your, your survey drawing. And if it's a CAD drawing, you've got two options. You've got your link CAD option. You also have your uh, import option. Now, I prefer the link CAD option. As for me, you've got better control over these files than with your import option. Now, like I explained earlier with the sanitizing of your CAD data, is that um, there may be issues on those files which can cause project instability or corrupt files when bringing them into Revit. Now, you can imagine when you have a lot of views and you've imported um, various CAD files, after a while, when you start hiding them because you don't need them anymore, um, it's easy to, for them to get lost in translation and for you to, lose, to lose track of them. Now, if with the linking option with your manage links um, dialog box, you can control them better. So if I open that up, go to my CAD, obviously I don't have anything linked in yet, but with my tools there at the bottom, I'm able to decide what I want to do with my CAD file. Um, yes, okay, so I'm just going to close that. So now I'm going to insert my drawing, use my link CAD option. Then I will select the, the drawing that I want to bring in. And obviously you've got some settings that you need to, to look at before you bring it in. Now, starting with the current view only, now this impacts uh, the visibility of information and also behavior of CAD data when it's brought into your project. Now, if you need to generate a 3D topography of it, um, I will normally keep this setting unticked um, as you don't want to impact the appearance and the visibility of any data, including text and um, point height, uh, um, you know, points that uh, show heights. Then the rest of your settings, you will also look at that. So I just want to mention in this example, I'm sticking to um, having it unticked. Then some of your other options is your colors, your layers, your import units. So colors, if you, you can either preserve it or you can switch it to black and white if you want. I just find it easier to have it on, on colors. Then you can select your layers. Um, in my example, I've used all, but if you want to be very specific of the layers that you want to bring in, you can go and specify that as well. Then your import units, um, I keep it to auto detect, but just a tip is to um, just go and make sure in your CAD, in your CAD file, I mean AutoCAD, that the units are set to meters because that um, usually impacts the scale of which your drawing is brought in. I found that if it was a millimeter, it was too small. Then your correct lines that are slightly off axis, that just makes sure that your, your lines display correctly. Positioning, I'm keeping it to auto origin to internal origin. And that's because I want my the drawing to be placed at my internal origin um, of Revit. Obviously, you've got other options uh, that's more manual, and that's where you decide where to position the drawing yourself. All right, so when you've set up your settings, you can then continue um, to open your drawing. Okay, so we're just going to give it a while to load. Great, so now you will see that it has positioned it um, on my internal um, origin point. Okay, just zoom out to show you. And so the next step will then be for me to specify my coordinates. Now on the CAD drawing, we can see that there are benchmark coordinates that was provided. I've got a benchmark one and a benchmark two, and uh, the, I'm going to use the, the values of benchmark one. So I can see my Y axis, X, and also the Z axis. So as I've mentioned earlier, you can either uh, specified by directly clicking on those icons or you can go to your manage tab. So if I click it, there we can see the values are still at zero. But um, and I can enter it there. I'm using the specify coordinates at point option for this example. Also if you use this option just make sure that you click on the exact intersection of that point and you will see a dialog box uh, that says specify shared coordinates which opens and then here you will start entering your values. I just need to, to zoom out a bit to see my actual values.
Okay, so just doing that again, specify it at a point. Then starting with your Y axis. Also just make sure to keep track of your number of digits. I found that I've easily made a typo for that. So it's 123000, I think it's seven. And then also your um, elevation. Now that, that Z um, value obviously um, relates to your contour levels on site. Okay, so if I click OK, if I click on that project base point now, we can see that the coordinate values have been updated. Um, for this example, um, I had the, the true north set to zero degrees. It, the, it wasn't at an angle, but obviously, if your true north is at an angle, you will set it or enter it there. Okay, so if I zoom out, you guys can also see that your survey point now sits further away. So that's just because my project base points values have updated. So to do this, I will unclip it and I'll just move it back and place it on top of that benchmark point. And remember, this is now your, um, it acts as that real world location point um, and it helps you to recognize that. So by repositioning it on this point, we can also see that the values have updated correctly. Still also need to just update the elevation height. Okay, so I, I think here it was, I needed, I had to unclip it first. Once again, you enter your Z value, which is 61035.5. Okay, now if I've done that, I just need to clip it again. And then you can go and you can, if you want, you can uh, place your project base point at the position where you want to put your building. So here you can see I've already drawn in some reference lines for the corner of where I want to uh, link in my, my building. So if you want, you can place the project base point on that corner. So now that I've established my coordinate system and I've also um, drawn, I've brought in my survey drawing, I can actually go and also model my topography. Before I do that, I also just need to define my site. So here you can also um, enter your location. I haven't set uh, exact location in this example, and here you will define your site. So by default, Revit's, uh, Revit's calls the site internal current, but you can rename it to a site name that you will be able to recognize. I called it something like stand1234, whatever name you want to give it. You can use the actual stand numbers as well if you want. All right, so now you can go to your massing insights uh, just to model your topo surface. So because I've got a CAD drawing, I'm going to use the create from import option. And you will use the first one which says select import instance. So if I click that, you just need to click your link. And then Revit will show you the various layers from the CAD drawing. You will switch it off and you will only select your contour layers. So by doing this, Revit will then pull the heights and also um, the, the, the yeah, to pull the heights from the actual CAD drawing. So yeah, we can see our, our um, topography was generated automatically. It's quite nice. Okay, so once we've done this, we can then, I'm just going to stop for now, and uh, we can then head over to our building model. I just want to show us a couple of things. And after that, we will then link it into our site model. Clicking too fast here. Okay, so um, if we if we go to our architectural model, um, we can just see some settings. And typically on larger projects, um, it actually works better to have separate building models, which you then link into your site model in order to manage your coordinate system. Now, as the real world coordinates um, have been established in my site model, 
during the previous stage, the building or your building or your building models um, can now be linked into the site model and then they can be positioned in relation to the survey data. And then the locations of each building um, can then be exported from the site model out to the building model file. Now I just want to start this one. So here you are in my separate building model and I will go to my ground floor view. I just uh, zoom into the corner of my building. Well, first I made sure my orientation is set to Project North just to make my modeling easier. Okay, and if I zoom into my corner, yeah, I've used the spot coordinate annotation tool just to show the values um, of that point uh, relative to grid lines F and 1. And also if we look at the values um, here, we can see that um, it actually doesn't sit too far away from the datum um, of my project. So remember where I said earlier is that um, that's just to show you where you can find your um, spot annotate spot coordinate tool. And here we can see the internal origin point. And it's still set in its default position with the, zero, uh, with the values to zero. So because it's a linked project, they're going to be attained from my host site model. Then if I just head over to my east elevation, you can see the, the level of the ground floor is still at zero meters. Okay, now also if I go to my tile properties, if I change the elevation base from project base points to survey point, you will see that the value still remains at zero. This will obviously change when, when the building is relocated on the correct elevation height um, in our site model. Okay, so going to our next example. Um, here I'm back in my site model again, and I'm in my site plan view. So from here, I will then just link back in um, the Revit model that we that I just showed you. So I'm going to go to Insert, Link Revit. You will select your building model. And for this option, I've set my positioning to manual at center. And that's because I'm going to reposition my building anyway. So I'm just going to, to place it down. And then I'll be um, aligning it so that grid lines F and 1 coincides with the two intersection lines. And so just quickly aligning those two. Okay, so then the next step would be to actually relocate my building in terms of its elevation height. So I've just created a section uh, to do that. And if you go to your section view, I'm just switching my site um, or my topography to a wireframe. You can just select your link and you can pull it up by 72 meters. And by doing that, now it sits um, at the correct relative height in terms of your um, site. Okay, so once you've done that, um, back on your site plan view, you can then uh, continue to actually publish the coordinates of the site model uh, to the building file. Okay, so to do that, or oh, I actually first repositioned my project origin point or base point, and we can see that the coordinates also change accordingly. Yeah, I just needed to um, just end correctly into the elevation height. Okay, so then to publish my coordinates, I will go to my Manage tab, then Project Location, and in the drop down you select Publish Coordinates. And then you will simply select the link that you want to publish it to. Once again, I need to define my site. This is called OS Current, but I can re rename it and once again call it Stand1234. Or if you've got more than one building, you can call it something like building a site or something that you will be able to recognize. Just on this, um, I just note that this process of publishing, it recognizes the current position of the building on the site. And as I explained earlier, it pushes the established coordinate system out to that building model. Um, the, but the information is not actually sent to the architectural model yet. We need to first save that position 
uh, in order for it to update in the link. So this process just caches it in preparation. So we will go to our manage links, we will select our link, and then we will say save positions. And then Revit will ask you what you want to do, and we're going to say save the new position back to the link. So this is an important step that um, users tend to, to forget or don't know about. Okay, so now, now that this is done, I can then just head back to my building model to check if my co coordinates have been established correctly. Okay, so as a final step back in my building model and on my, I'm on my ground floor view, and once again, if I look at that corner, I can see that uh, that values that I previously referred to has actually updated correctly. And we can also see off in this example, just repositioned my project base point uh, to sit on the intersection of those two grid lines as well. Okay, we can also see by clicking on it, the, the coordinates have updated correctly. So then if I go to my east elevation, um, my ground floor level line still shows at zero meters, but that is because it's still set to the to the project base point. So once again, if I change the elevation base to, to reflect the survey point, uh, we can see that it updates correctly. Now it shows 72 meters. Okay, so obviously we need to do it for that level line as well. Okay, so just also note that for the purpose of generating your drawings, um, any reference that you make to, co uh, to coordinates and elevations such as these uh, can be toggled between your project datum and also your real world uh, shared dat um, datums. And you can also do this for your the orientation of your views. So if I go back to my site plan view and I toggle between the project and the true north, I can see that it uh, changes um, in, relative, oh, yeah, in relative rotation. Now, once again, back to ground floor, if I set it to project nodes, it, it displays at uh, orthogonal. Okay, so if I, um, if I want to use my site model within my building model file, I can also link it in as well. So this is nice to use it as a cross-referencing system. So I will go to link Revit again and open the correct um, site model. That's now the one in which the shared coordinates has been set up. And here you guys can see that I forgot one step and that was to set my positioning correctly. So because it was already set up, you will here choose auto buy shared coordinates. If I select that, then it will actually position my site correctly. And we can see it sits correct nicely on my site. Okay, so now, now we've done some cross-referencing on our files and also we've seen that the shared coordinates controls this whole process. And also, it, as your projects get more complicated, it, is, it, it becomes imperative for you to maintain the basic rules for controlling the relative locations um, of each of the component files. So this actually brings us to the end of this presentation. And I will, and actually before I allow us for some questions, I would just like to give you guys some takeaways from today. So first of all, the process of setting up your project and also your site is uh, to provide context for the model. And that is, uh, you specify the geographic location, you define your true north, and also your survey point and project base point. Also, the position of your BIM model is important. Uh, especially if you're working in a team and also with linked models. Then your shared coordinates, it involves establishing a coordinate system that is referenced throughout uh, the connected project. Lastly, your shared coordinates should only be derived from one file. And like I said, this is typically, if you have a BIM execution plan, it, it's outlined in that plan as well. Then just how can we help you? Um, if you want to know more about the entire Revit journey or you need help with that, um, you can look for one of our standard uh, training courses or a pressure training and we will show you the way. Then if you want to dive deeper into the whole Revit project setup and managing of coordinates, we've got a specialist series that you can look for and there we can show you this whole process and also 
how to do this for more uh, complex projects. Um, also, if you need help with your BIM standards in your office or on any project, you can talk to us about your BIM execution plan. Great, so I will now like to open the floor for any questions. Uh, if you do have, just pop them in the chat box. Okay, I see that there's no questions. If you guys do have or can think of any questions after today's session, you, you are more than welcome to get in touch with, uh, with me and I'll gladly assist you or give advice. Just giving a last, a last opportunity for questions. Okay, great. I don't want to delay you guys from having a weekend any longer. Hopefully you will be off soon. So just want to end this off. Just quickly um, on our iAdopt um, consulting and some of you may be familiar with it, but this is our unique approach in which we have clients. And we do this uh, by helping you develop and implement digital strategies and transformation. We also help you optimize your business processes and workflow. We can help you adopt technology and also with that design and make a better world. So the benefit of this lies in the, in, in the approach uh, we have and that is to, towards solving our customers' problems and also um, helping you deliver tangible outcomes and assistance with change management. And besides the fact that our consulting uh, strategy can actually be customized according to your needs, you may prefer a more holistic approach, uh, which addresses various um, organizational issues, um, and that makes our iAdopt quite favorable. Sorry, I think I've managed to actually um, stop my, <laughs> exit my, my presentation, but that was actually the end of it. And if you guys do want to go and check us out online, uh, be sure to follow our um, social media platforms. We are on LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Instagram, and also um, if you need any support, you're welcome to, to contact our support desk. Our office hours are uh, from on my, um, weekdays from Monday to Friday between 8 and 11.30 in the evenings. And then I would really like to um, thank you all once again for joining me. And that's a wrap for today's session. And yeah, go and have a good weekend.